Hello and welcome to the Thursday, February 5th edition of Titan TV News. I'm Steve Santucci. And I'm Gina Blasky. And we're glad you're tuning in this week. Well, Gina, it is already February. That's insane. Can you believe that? And we survived that snow blizzard, whatever you want to call it, ice age that happened over the past weekend. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think it's I think it's safe to say we're starting to settle in to the semester. I would say so. Yeah. Well, let's get you guys caught up with what's going on this week on campus. Take it away, Gina. All right. Running from 4 to 5 p.m. today, February 5th, the Hart Career Center will be hosting a Career Center workshop based around creating a professional LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is the professional website of choice for most employers, and students are encouraged to use it too. The Career Center staff will help interested students set up their accounts and get started with networking. This event is going to be held in the Welcome Center Auditorium. LinkedIn. That's a pretty you, good use of social media for all of you looking for jobs. Something I need to update. <laughs> the Academy Award nominated Czech film, Divided We Fall, will be shown in the Beckman Auditorium at 7 p.m. as part of the International Film Series. Divided We Fall follows the stories of three characters caught in the chaos of the Nazi occupation of Czechoslovakia. The film wonderfully orchestrates and investigates its themes, which center around the flexibility of human morals and the frailty of peace. Whether you're a student of history or if you just enjoy a great movie, you should definitely come out and attend. At 8 p.m. in the Hanson Student Center, the Athens Boys Choir, a transgender spoken word performance, will be part of the 3D series. Those three Ds, meaning diversity, dignity, and dialogue, all of which help to serve the message of inclusion and visibility of various gender and sexual minorities on campus. The IWU Pride Alliance is hosting its 12th annual charity drag show this Friday, so come out and see students and professionals alike perform in hardcore drag. In its biggest event of the year, Pride Alliance emphasizes giving back to the LGBT plus community of Bloomington Normal. So this year's proceeds will go to Prairie Pride Coalition. Drag is not required to enter, but is greatly encouraged. There's also a suggested $5 entrance donation and a culture of tipping the kings and queens. Doors open at 7.30 for this event on February 6th in the Hanson Student Center. And now for a big event coming up this week. On Sunday, February 8th, starting at 3 p.m., a delegation of visiting faculty and students from Teachers College of Beijing Union University will present a concert in Illinois Wesleyan University's Westbrook Auditorium. Representative of the concert's theme, Global Music Bridges, more than 10 faculty and students will present selections from composers ranging from Mozart to Rodgers and Hammerstein to a folk song from Zhejiang, an autonomous province in northwest China. Performers include pianists, violinists, sopranos, tenors, and dancers. Two selections will feature Uru, a two-string bowed instrument sometimes known in the West as a Chinese violin. Other selections on the program include Puccini's Visi de Arte from Tosca, Hua Wanjun's The Moon Reflected on the Second Spring, the masterpiece of Chinese Urhu music, an area from St. Sain's Samson and Delilah, and Lysili's Fisherman's Harvest Song, which portrays the joyful scene of the fisherman's harvest from the South China Sea. The delegation from BUU is visiting Illinois Wesleyan as part of a partnership between the Chinese University and Illinois Wesleyan. BUU faculty and students will work with IWU music students during their 10-day visit to Illinois Wesleyan. The concert is free and open to the public. The Hart Career Center will be offering yet another program, this time on the Titan Career Link website on February 9th at 11 a.m. in the dugout. There will be a Career Center table there where you can stop by, ask questions, make appointments, get your Titan Career Link set up, and more. This Tuesday, February 10th, is the ISU and IWU Spring Internship Fair. It's set to be held from 4 to 7 p.m. in the Bone Student Center at 100 North University Street in Normal. A full list of companies and organizations in attendance can be found on the IWU Career Center website. For those who are interested, these fairs are a great opportunity to learn more about your career path and professionals in your field, as well as a good place to find new internships for next year. So here at Titan TV News, we highly recommend that you check that out. Also on Tuesday the 10th, a panel of professionals in the field of environmental science will share insights about their professions and advice on how to make those interested in the field a little more competitive candidate for hiring and careers down the road. This panel is part of the Alumni Speaker Series and starts at 7 p.m. in the Welcome Center Auditorium. 
And now on to more global news. An expert on chemical weapons working for the Islamic State was killed this past week in a coalition airstrike. This comes at a time when the Islamic State has beheaded two Japanese citizens and is looking to recapture ground in both Iraq and Syria. Abu Malik, the chemical weapons expert, once worked for Saddam Hussein before defecting to Al-Qaeda and now the Islamic State. His death could potentially save hundreds of lives. After a historic election in Greece that rattled Europe, Greece's new leaders seek to pull the country out of its crippling debt. The new Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras and Finance Minister Yanis Varoufakis plan to put Europeans first as they look to negotiate with foreign creditors to settle their outstanding debt. Meanwhile, they have rejected accepting another international bailout package. Prime Minister, Minister Tsipras' Syrzia party is strictly anti-austerity and plans to fully reverse the country's current economic policy in the upcoming years. And finally, in global news, the first large-scale trial of a new Ebola vaccine has begun in Liberia. The new vaccine will act as a preventative measure, as most vaccines are, against the virus. 30,000 volunteers will be injected with a small amount of denatured Ebola in order to trick their immune systems into creating antibodies. Should these trials prove successful in preventing Ebola transmission between people, the world may finally have a way to stop enter any future outbreaks from spreading. That's pretty big news. Mm -hmm. And now on to some domestic news. The United States rejected a demand by the Cuban President Raul Castro to return the naval base prison to Cuba. The U.S. required this base in 1903 through a legal agreement, but the current government sees this as an illegal occupation. The United States and Cuba have seen a thaw in relations this past month as each country has been showing acts of goodwill to one another in order to restore diplomatic ties. This has been the first request rejected since the two nations started to begin to negotiate. And finally, in domestic news, both houses of Congress have now passed a bill approving the construction of the Keystone XL pipeline. The pipeline would run from the tar sands in Alberta, Canada to refineries in Texas. Republican leaders in Congress have been pushing for the construction of this pipeline for years, claiming it as an economic boost to the nation. Meanwhile, President Obama has opposed the pipeline, claiming that it will mostly benefit Canada and that it won't help the U.S. decrease carbon emissions that are causing climate change. The bill will now go to the White House and will either be signed or vetoed. Let's talk about sports, shall we? Let's start off with basketball. Men's basketball beat Carthage 77-65 last Saturday in Kenosha. Congratulations. And they'll be taking on North Central College this Saturday in the Shirk Center at 7 p.m. Women's basketball unfortunately lost 57-68 to to Carthage on Saturday, but they'll be taking on North Central this Saturday also at home at 5 p.m. before the men's game. Women's track and field took first place out of 12 this Saturday at the Titan Open Meet. Congrats. Both the men and women's track teams compete this Friday at 3 p.m. and Saturday at 10 a.m. in the Shirk Center. Also, it's senior day this Saturday for track and field teams, so congratulations. Lastly, if you didn't already hear, Super Bowl happened this past Sunday. Patriots beat the Seahawks 28-24 in Super Bowl 49. Just a little global national sports news to mix it up. So congratulations to everyone around here at IWU and good luck in the upcoming weeks in the world of sports. Titan TV's own Steve Santucci and Michael Wettengel created and submitted a film project to the Titan TV fiction branch entitled Just Business, which is going to be airing all throughout this week and into next week. Just Business was filmed over the 2014-2015 winter break. Alec Fallier, a film student from the University of Michigan and a friend of Michael, stars alongside Steve Santucci in this short film about betrayal and deception. The film has a showing tonight at 9.15 on Channel 5 and Channel 6. Also keep an eye out for the schedules posted around campus for times and channels for the short film and other programming from Titan TV. Well, thanks for tuning in on another great edition of Titan TV. Great job, Gina. Great job, Steve. <laughs> Thank you very much. We hope you'll tune in next week. But for now, my name is Steve Santucci. I'm Gina Blasky. Go, Go get them, Titans! Titans.